Shalom, shalom, my hovering. Greetings, my YouTube mishmaha. What's up, what's up, my people? And welcome, friends, to Bible on a Bicycle. Yeshua said, If you love me, keep my commandments. My name is Will, and I'm an aspirant follower of Yeshua HaMashiach, that is, Jesus Christ. And in this series of little videos, we've been taking a look at the 50, that's right, 50 commands that our Lord and Savior Yeshua gave us during his short earthly ministry. Many commands. That's a lot of commands. Yeah, yeah, I know. Most of you are familiar with those 10 commandments. But when Yeshua came here on earth to proclaim the gospel of the coming kingdom, he not only fulfilled the law and commandments, but he also made them harder to follow by making them not a matter of our outward appearance or ritual practice, but a matter of the heart. But what are these 50 commands of Yeshua's? And what does it mean to us as believers to follow them? Well, if you're like me, when I began making these series of videos, and you have no idea that Yeshua had 50 commands that he left us, give or take, during his short earthly ministry. And this is your first time here? You might want to check out that little playlist up there. Get all caught up. But in this here particular video, we're going to be taking a close look at Yeshua's command to forgive offenders. But in order to do that, I invite you to open up your Bibles. And join us today as we turn back to the book of Matityahu, that's Matthew, back there in the New Testament, chapter 18, and you got your Bible? Go ahead, go get your Bible. Boot it on, power it up, plug it in, or just pull it off the shelf. However you do it, please go get your Bible and join us here today. This here isn't a spectator sports, folks. This here is you and I learning a little bit together. You got your Bible now? All right. Now that we all got our Bibles, let's turn to chapter 18, verses 21 and 22, where it is written, we can read, Then Peter came up and said to him, Lord, how many times, times shall, shall my brother, brother sin, sin against, against me, me, and I still forgive him? Up to seven times? Yeshua said to him, I do not say to you up to seven times, but up to seventy-seven times. When someone offends us, it's natural to want to punish them, especially if they keep hurting us. Forgiving offenders and living with the consequences of their action seems unreasonable from our perspective. However, God's way is different, and He warns us of serious consequences if we fail to carry out this commandment. Yeshua emphasized this when he taught his disciples to pray, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. That's in Matthew chapter 6 verse 12. Right after that, he added, for if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you don't forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. That's in Matthew chapter 6, verses 14 through 15. Basically, if we refuse to forgive, we won't be forgiven ourselves. Let's break down what forgiveness is all about and why it's so important. First off, Yeshua uses a story to illustrate this concept. In Matthew chapter 8, verses 21 through 22, Peter asked Yeshua how many times he should forgive someone. He thought seven times was generous. Yeshua replied, no, 70 times seven. This wasn't about a specific number, but rather about always being ready to forgive. Yeshua told a story about a king and his servant. The servant owed the king 10,000 talents, which is an enormous debt about 60 million days wages. Imagine owing that much today. It's like owing someone as rich as Donald Trump. The king wanted his money back immediately and threatened to sell the servant and his family. The servant begged for mercy, promising to pay back everything, which is an impossible task. 
moved with compassion, the king forgave the entire debt. Yeshua wants us to see that we are in a similar situation with God. We owe him more than we could ever repay because of our sins. Romans chapter 6 and 23 reminds us that the wages of sin is death. Our sins put us in debt to God, a debt we can't repay. Our best efforts are like filthy rags. Isaiah 64 verse 6. Yeshua paid the debt we couldn't. He was whipped, beaten, and crucified for our sins. The nails, the crown of thorns, and the suffering should have been ours, but he took it. He took it all and declared, it is finished. Next in Matthew chapter 18 verses 28 through 35, Yeshua explains why forgiveness is so crucial. After being forgiven, the servant found a fellow servant who owed him a much smaller amount, a hundred pence or about a hundred days wages. He demanded immediate payment and showing no mercy threw the fellow servant into prison despite his pleas for more time. Other servants reported this to the king who was furious. He rebuked the unforgiving servant, calling him wicked for not showing the same mercy that he had received. The king handed him over to the tormentors until he could repay the original debt. God has forgiven us a great debt and expects us to do the same for others. Yeshua set the ultimate example by forgiving those who crucified him. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. No one has hurt us as much as we have hurt God. James chapter 2 verse 13 tells us, For there will be no mercy for you if you have not been merciful to others. But if you have been merciful, then God's mercy toward you will run out over judgment against you. Finally, let's talk about our responsibility to forgive. In the Sermon on the Mount, Yeshua teaches, If you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Forgiveness means to let go, leave behind, dismiss, or cancel a debt. If we let go of others' sins, God will let go ours. Forgiveness is a reciprocal process. Our willingness to forgive others reflects in God's forgiveness of our sins. If we refuse to forgive, we won't be forgiven. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 32 urges us to be kind, tender-hearted, and forgiving just as God has forgiven us. Holding on to grudges harms us physically and spiritually, causing stress, high blood pressure, heart attacks, and strokes. No matter how much we've been hurt, we need to let go, put it behind us, dismiss it, and cancel the death. So, to wrap things up, one, there's the reality of forgiveness. We owe a debt we cannot pay, but God forgave us. Two, there's a reason for forgiveness. God expects us to forgive as he has forgave us. And three, there's the responsibility of forgiveness. We must forgive to be forgiven. What will you do with your unforgiveness? Will you hold on to it, or will you let go and let God handle it? Yeshua's message is clear. If we want to be forgiven, we must forgive. Let's strive to be forgiving, showing the same mercy that has been shown to us. Amen. Amen, amen. Well, once again, this here command hits right at home with me as I'm sure it does many of you out there. So that looks about just as good a place as any to close up our Bibles for now. Let's have us a little talk about this forgiving offenders. I'm sure many of you out there, most of you out there, are just like me when it comes to forgiveness. We find it a little difficult, especially if those that we're supposed to be forgiving are continually offending against us. It's difficult. No one said it was going to be an easy path to follow, friends. It's the reward at the end of that path. To follow Yeshua is a difficult path to choose. This command 
shows exactly one of the reasons why to forgive offenders now it's easy for us to just say i forgive you to see our father he sees past that he sees what's going on right in here right in our heart right in here in our hidden thoughts forgive it isn't just an outward act and neither is accepting forgiveness it's not just an act that we should put on as believers or brothers and sisters or to our loved ones just to appease the situation no rather we need to sincerely work on our hearts our minds bring this here flesh into submission and aspire to emulate and follow Yeshua HaMashiach. As a matter of fact, our very salvation could hinge upon this commandment. For our inability to forgive others keeps us from being forgiven of our own sins. What about you all out there struggling with that forgiving someone? Is there someone who's offended you or wronged you in life, abused you, done you dirty, and you're finding it real hard to forgive them? I'm not saying condone their actions. I'm not saying appease them and think, let them think that everything that they've done was all right. No, no. I'm saying, have you come to terms with it? Have you overcome that hate and that anger, that resentment, that unforgiveness? It's up to you. See, that's the funny thing about the Lord. He gave us free will so that we might be image bearers, stewards of his creation, if you will. And much of that depends on not only how we treat his creation, but how we treat one another and ourselves. All right, I've rambled on long enough. Now we come to the point where I say, I'd like to thank you. That's right, you. You watching this right now for joining me here today. I know these here little videos, they aren't the most popular. Everybody comes here for those fan edits. So I wanted you to know how much it means to me for you to take time out of your busy day. Knowing that your time is valuable, I really do appreciate you spending it here with me. Hopefully, opening up your Bibles, getting into the scriptures, and drawing a little closer to our Lord and Savior, and therefore, our uncreated creator. If you did benefit from this video in any way, you know the routine. If you're not already part of our little family here, hit that subscribe button down below. Give us a little love down there with a the thumbs up and make sure to share it with any friends or family members that you think might benefit from watching it as well. Same thing goes for my little small posse over there on Rumble. Give us a follow, give us a like, share it around as well. Hope to see you here next time. And until next time, remember, you sure? Jesus loves you. So do I. Get off of here, go ride your bike, and read your Bible.